All right, uh, we're going to move to Ukraine and uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson reportedly coming around to the idea of Ukraine aid, so long as he can get a political win out of it. The New York Times reports Johnson is allegedly hinging his support on a measure that would force President Biden to reverse a pause on new permits for liquefied natural gas export facilities. Should that happen, it would give the speaker a personal win, unblocking a proposed export facility in his home state of Louisiana. Johnson has also discussed financing some of the aid by selling off Russian sovereign assets that have been frozen and turning the money into loans the Ukrainians would have to pay back. The speaker has not publicly pledged his support for any option, but he has stated the House will address Ukraine uh, once it returns to Washington next week. Let's bring NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ali Vitale. Ali, what more do we know about this? There's a little Trumpy sound to that, making Ukraine <sighs> pay back. Yeah, that's definitely one of the ideas, though, that's percolating, Mika, in large part because we've seen the idea of just giving continued direct aid to Ukraine fall flat, especially among key people within Johnson's House Republican conference. Now, if it wasn't Ukraine, it would be the appropriations package that has him in trouble. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't the appropriations package, it would be the border. You can really pick any issue. And the realities of a very slim margin that seems to always be getting slimmer in the House GOP becomes evident when you speak about the way that Mike Johnson is going to navigate this next stretch going forward. Now, the House has been on recess for the last week. They don't come back until next week. This is him trying to get his ducks in a row here. Mm. But it's now the second time that we've heard this idea of frozen Russian assets being a way to possibly give aid to Ukraine, even if it's just on a loan basis. This is not just something mm -hmm. that House Republicans are talking about amongst themselves either. When President Zelensky last week spoke with Johnson, he referenced this idea in in his tweet sort of giving a readout of what they talked about. So this is something that could be gaining traction, but I think it's also important to note the way that he's pairing it with the potential to do more on liquefied natural gas. Of course, that's something that helps him at home, as you mentioned, as well as abroad. But then also the idea that they're also going to try to contend with the border, which has been such a thorny issue the entire time that he's been speaker, which, again, has not been the entirety of this Congress. We all remember what happened right. at the end of last year that landed Mike Johnson in this very tough position to begin with. Yeah, Gene Robinson, though, uh, it looks as if uh, the speaker understands he really needs to get the yes. I'm sure he's hearing from... He has the chairman, chairwomen that, that run the most important foreign policy committees saying, you know, you either get there or we'll, we'll find a way to get there, if it's, whether it's a petition or. But, but it looks like we're moving in that direction. Yeah, it looks like things are moving in, in that direction, but boy, are they moving slowly. You know, the House doesn't even get back until next week. And so, uh, meanwhile, uh, the, the days pass, the clock ticks. And Dave, uh, a question for David Ignatius. David, you were just in Ukraine. Uh, you interviewed President Zelensky. What is the situation on the ground there now? How long can Ukraine hold out and how are the Ukrainians doing? So, Gene, he was very specific about what the delay of nearly six months in approving this package is meant for Ukraine. They can't get started in building new brigades that they need for offense uh, coming later this year or next year. Uh, he said that unless the aid comes, he's going to have to shrink his lines, meaning retreat, uh, if he's only got uh, 2,000 of the 8,000 artillery shells he needs, he said, the only way to handle that is to have a smaller front line that he has to defend. So he's talking about, about having to move west uh, as the Russians advance. A lot of really frightening possibilities. I think Ukraine will be enormously relieved if this package does go through. Uh, I'm, I'm told that Ukrainian soldiers in their trenches look at their phones to see what the latest news is from the U.S. Congress, if you can imagine that. So, so this will be a morale booster for the people who are fighting so hard in that country. Just a final thing, uh, while the Ukrainians have been waiting for the United States to provide this aid, they haven't just sat around. They've been developing their own weapons. And they're now sending those weapons into Russia, 
There was a strike uh, just over the last 24 hours, 1,300 kilometers from Ukraine to a Russian target. So they've got drones of their own, not our drones, that can hit targets that far away. Those refineries that you've seen ablaze, those have been hit by Ukrainian drones. So they're not waiting. They need those weapons, uh, but but they're, they're determined not, not to give up. All right. The Washington Post, David Ignatius, thank you so much for your insights this morning. We hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.